You're in the market for a new computer and you're looking for something that is compact, that has good battery life and something that could actually perform some heavy duty tasks. If that's you, then I think the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Nano might just be what you're looking for. <laughs> Hey, what up? It's your boy Mob Justice back again with another video. And for today, we do get into a review of uh, the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Nano. It is a compact little, um, I think people call them Ultrabooks. It's basically a small laptop computer. And for today, we're going to be delving into some of the nitty gritties that you need to be considering if this is something that uh, you'd want to buy for yourself. As always, this uh, video is brought to you by the team over at Lion Media. Uh, head on over to check out some of the crispiest uh, photo, video, and audio content. That's www.lionmedia.com. Head on over, uh, check it out, and just see uh, what the team can do for you. This is the second ThinkPad X1 device that we've had on this channel. Um, you can just uh, scroll up and look at our previous review. We had the folding device uh, previously, so it was really cool to see the laptop iteration of it. Um, Lenovo gave us uh, this device uh, to check out for about a month and uh, they did not pay for this review. Right off the bat, I can say that this machine is a beast. It's a tiny little machine, but it is very powerful. In my testing, there were three distinct areas that I was looking at. First, um, how does it perform as a mobile workstation? And then secondly, in terms of uh, media consumption. And then third, because I am into the world of, uh, you know, uh, video creativity, video production, um, as we've had for other laptop tests, you know, took it through uh, the video your testing realm just to see uh, what it would be like as a workstation for that type of task. I'm going to display the specs of the machine, you know, somewhere here, uh, but it's basically, you know, a tiny little machine uh, running with, uh, you know, an i7, very powerful uh, processor that it was running at. And uh, for most of the tasks that I went through, I'll definitely say it was more than adequate. In terms of build quality, like I said, very compact device. The last review that we had of a computing device was of the Chromebook, and that was also, um, you know, a similarly sized device, but I would say this. This one is slightly smaller, uh, both in terms of footprint, but especially, um, you know, on the on the on how thin it is, because it is extremely thin. And when you compare it, you know, to, you know, an iPad Pro or maybe even a MacBook Pro, you definitely get to see, um, you know, how small it is. The device featured a matte finish on the outside. It was matte black, um, which was really cool. You know, it does attract a little bit of fingerprints, especially if you have um, oil you do notice them um, and then on the inside it features a matte screen which is you know really quite good and then this is the first time that I've dealt with one of these new machines that only has um, USB type C on the outside that was actually quite an interesting dynamic to work through and then obviously it has a headphone jack and we're always grateful for those moving on to some impressions and quirks I'll start off with the speakers I'd say they're actually pretty good you know given how small uh, this machine is they were very loud. I was actually quite surprised, you know, by that. Um, you know, not the greatest, but you know, very loud for their size. And then the second thing is the screen. Um, as great as the screen is for viewing content, I really think that given how small it is, they could have gone with a touch screen option as well. That's the flexibility that Windows has been able to have. And I think that would have really made sense because in certain cases, I found myself being tempted to actually touch the screen. Just Despite its small size, the keyboard really has a good uh, travel and a great feel. Could definitely see myself um, using a machine like this to answer emails and to just type uh, for extended periods. During this review, I challenged myself to use the Edge browser, that is Microsoft's uh, internet browser. And I haven't really been engaging with this, uh, you know, on my end. I have a Windows machine. It has Edge, but I hardly ever use it. I am usually a Chrome user, uh, sometimes Safari, uh, but mainly a Chrome user. So it was very interesting using this browser. For the most part, it works in mostly the same way, but you can tell um, 
that uh, Microsoft feels that competition from Chrome because they display uh, this ad at the top saying you don't need anything else, you know, which is actually quite funny, uh, but uh, you know, it is what it is. Camera quality, like any other laptop, nothing to really write home about, but I really like the fact uh, that uh, they've included a physical mechanism to actually close uh, the camera when not in use. On the whole, I found that the machine was generally very quiet. You hardly ever hear anything um, in terms of, you know, the fans. It does have fans inside, but you never, ever hear them. Um, they only ever kicked on for me um, during, you know, export when I was doing the video testing. Otherwise, for normal tasks, viewing content, um, just going through documents, emails, that type of thing very quiet. On the not so positive side, a couple of things. Firstly, I had uh, some issues actually reconnecting to Wi-Fi whenever I would um, start the machine, you know, you switch it on, etc. Usually these machines just automatically get onto the Wi-Fi, but I found myself, you know, having to manually reconnect in a number of instances. And then also at the same time, just finding the battery icon. I think that's more, you know, my knowledge of Windows. I use Windows every day, but for some reason, um, it just had some issues actually displaying uh, the battery icon and that's very necessary when you're dealing with the battery powered machine. And then lastly, this one uh, was more in the unusual. I had one instance uh, where the machine almost completely bricked or, you know, sort of froze and basically it was unresponsive and I had to restart it again uh, to actually get things going. But luckily it only happened once. Moving on to video editing, this was probably the, you know, most strenuous thing that I did uh, with the machine and a lot of uh, computers, laptops tend to falter and buckle quite a bit under um, video editing uh, scenarios. So that's what I decided to do. Actually worked on a proper project that we were working on for a client, uh, decided, uh, you know, to do the whole thing for a podcast series that we are producing did an episode and uh, the way that uh, you know ran the test uh, I charged the machine up to a hundred percent and then uh, edited purely um, just on uh, battery power just to see how far that battery would go I have an Acer Predator machine uh, that's my main editing machine and that one lasts usually less than an hour when you are editing on it on uh, Premiere Pro so I was quite impressed um, you know going through this machine because it lasted through um, a three hour editing session um, with a quarter of the battery um, left over. And it was only when you were exporting uh, that you really saw the battery draining quite a lot and at the same time, the fans kicking on. During that session, all I was using was an external SSD and headphones. There was nothing else plugged in, no external monitors, uh, you know, or anything extra. Uh, some of the other impressions is that, uh, you know, the surface um, was actually Actually quite warm to the touch because you could actually tell um, it was working and as I said the fans did kick on uh, when we now got to the export part. Overall, I'd say a very smooth editing process. I was, you know, editing uh, 1080p footage from three different Canon cameras, and I was quite impressed, particularly um, going into the multicam, because even with 1080p footage, that tends to be a bit strenuous um, on a lot of machines. Uh, so really great to see. This machine also beat out my main editing uh, machine when it comes to, firstly, uh, audio rendering. You know, people that uh, deal with large files know that if you adjust the volume or something um, on a file it might take some time to render it certainly does on my main editing machine uh, but this flew through um, those audio renders this machine actually took a much shorter time to export this 1080p file uh, than my main uh, predator editing machine uh, I think that's uh, largely down to the new Intel Evo platform uh, they both run i7s but this this one is running a newer generation. Two things though, firstly, um, as doable as it is, right, this is still a very small device. So if you're like me and you're editing three different streams of uh, footage, um, it can be, you know, a little bit of a tricky one, especially when you're on such a small screen. It's definitely doable, but if you care about screen size, that's something to think about. And then lastly, the touchpad was a little bit finicky, um, you know, during that editing process. Um, I think it's just because I'm used 
used to using a mouse uh, most of the time, but um, you know, I did notice that. So who is this machine for? That tends to be you know, a very key question um, when you're getting into the market. And I'd say if you're someone who's looking for a, a powerful machine on the go, this is good. If you are perhaps looking for something like a tablet type of situation, perhaps an iPad Pro, um, you know, for your productivity, but allows you to be flexible and mobile, then I think this is a good example, is, this is a good alternative. And then I think thirdly, um, if you're someone who values, you know, a great operating system, uh, all the advantages of Windows, then I definitely think um, a laptop like the ThinkPad X1 uh, will definitely work in your situation. So on the whole, a really great device. I'm actually quite impressed and uh, quite surprised at how much power uh, Lenovo has been able to pack into this tiny uh, little laptop machine. If you're someone who values uh, the ability to be on the go but still perform some of those high intensity tasks such as video editing, uh, then I think this would definitely be a good machine for you. I could see myself, you know, incorporating something like this into my own workflow. I primarily work at a desk uh, most of the time, but, uh, you know, for those instances where you are on the go, you need the strong battery life, you need the powerful internals and still be able to get through and edit then I think this one will be for you. So you guys can let me know what you think. Are you in the market for a laptop? Are laptops even still uh, something that you consider? I primarily use laptops, but a lot of people out there only use desktops for some of the heavy tasks. You guys can let me know what you think. Um, you know, do you think you could get something like this instead of a tablet? What are some of the workflows that you could see yourself um, using something like this for? So that's been it. You can let us know what you think in the comments and I'll catch you guys in the next video. This is Muffs Too Much and you're watching Mob Justice TV. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, follow us on Twitter. We're there on YouTube. Thank you for watching our video. Subscribe.